This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. All right, friends, here's the scoop. Hadron Archive is terrible and you're terrible if you play it. That's right, after years of hatred for this card building up inside of me, I'm dedicating an entire article and video explaining why this card is terrible. So let's jump into it. For those who aren't familiar with it, Hadron Archive is a mana rock with a converted mana cost of 4 and taps for 2 colorless mana. In addition, you can draw 2 cards by paying 2 mana and tapping and sacrificing the archive. This card is is very popular in Commander. According to EDH Rec, it shows up in 9% of all decks in their database, beating out cards like War and Power Stone and Sword of the Anime. So lots of people love this card. In doing research for this article, I asked people why they like Hedron Archive so much, and these are the arguments that kept popping up. It's good card draw in white, red, or Boros decks. It's good ramp in non-green decks. Being both ramp and card draw makes it way better, and it's one of your best card draw and ramp options on a tight budget. So in this video, I'm going to go over each argument, explain why I disagree about it, and to be fair and balanced, at the end, I'm going to show some decks where Hedron Archive is actually decent. First, let's start with the idea that Hedron Archive is good card draw in white, red, or Boros decks, since it's the easiest argument to shoot down. Drawing two cards off Hedron Archive requires casting the Archive for four mana, then spending an additional two mana and sacrificing it. So you just spent six mana to draw two cards. That's a terrible rate. Paying double for a Divination, a card that is too weak to ever see play in Commander, is a really, really bad spot to be in. Divination is a blue card though, and blue, green, and black have access to tons of amazing card draw options. So what about colors that have less stellar card draw options? White and red. Would Boros colors be desperate enough to play a six mana Divination? Absolutely not. I find it strange that people keep saying that red has bad card draw. That may have been true a decade ago when Commander first appeared as an official format, but over the years, Wizard of the Coast has been great at pushing amazing red card draw options to choose from. Red has tons of burst card draw options in the form of wheels, from the classic Wheel of Fortune, the Remix version, Reforge of Soul, or even a wheel that can be cast from the graveyard with Runehorn Hellkite. Any of these cards can take us from zero cards in hand back to a full group of seven instantly. But we also have an ever increasing number of incremental card draw options in the form of what's called impulse draw, such as Outpost Siege, Tectonic Giants, and Light Up the Stage, which let us temporarily cast the top cards of our library. There's a solid mix of these cards to choose from at pretty much any price point. Red and Boros decks are absolutely fine when it comes to card draw and should never stoop down to playing a 6 mana divination. Now I admit that mono white is a bit harder to fill a deck with good card draw. There's only a handful of white cards that I'd count as good card draw, but they do exist. Mentor of the Meek is an all-star in many white decks, especially when paired with efficient token generators. And of course there's land tax, which which in my opinion is one of the best cards in the entire format, making sure you never miss a land drop, and only gets better if you spend those excess lands to activate powerful cards like Scroll Rack and Magita the Lion. There's a few more, but not a lot that have the white color identity. However, Mono White has another source of card draw, and that's colorless cards. White is the best color to take advantage of colorless equipment that can draw at cards, like Mask of Memory, Sword of Fire and Ice, and the Almighty Skull Clamp. These are all repeatable sources of card draw that are far more efficient than Hedron Archive's draw 2 for 6 mana, and white is uniquely positioned to take advantage of them because it's the primary color for equipment support. We have tons of equipment tutors that fit a range of budgets, like the expensive Stoneforge Mystic, the decently priced Stone Hewer Giant, or the budget friendly Open Armory. On top of finding our equipment, White has additional equipment synergy, such as drawing cards off Pure Steel Paladin and SRAM Senior Edificer, or getting them back from her graveyard with Nahiri the Lithomancer. Even with slimmer pickings in white, you can actually set up a powerful card draw package in basically any deck thanks to how good white is at tutoring those pieces up. Even mono white decks can do way, way better than a 6 mana divination. 
So the second argument I hear about why people run Hedron Archive is that it's good ramp in non-green decks. People have told me that being a four mana ramp spell to task for two is a solid rate, that it's two mind stones stapled together, which is amazing. And there's even one person on Twitter who argues that Hedron Archive is actually better than two converted mana cost ramp spells like mind stone because it tasks for two mana instead of one, which means it'll generate more mana over a longer game. Strangely enough though, most defenders of Hedron Archive don't run Dreamstone Hedron, aka three Mind Stones stapled together, despite following the same logic. Dreamstone Hedron sees play in only 3% of all decks in EDHREC's database. The reason why Dreamstone Hedron sees less play than the other two cards is, well, because it's way worse ramp than the other two, but the same logic as to why it's worse than the other two can be applied to figure out why Hedron Archive is so much more worse than Mindstone. The problem with these arguments is that they ignore a fundamental aspect of good deck building. Each card in your deck should serve the deck's specific game plan in the most optimal way possible. Possible. Cards that don't serve the deck's game plan or serve it poorly are worth cutting if your goal is to optimize your deck. In the case of ramp, the question you should be asking yourself is, what is this card helping me ramp into? Now for the majority of commander decks, the cards that are the critical engines that turn on the rest of their deck are often found at the three to five converted mana cost range. Until those decks can start their engines, they're just sitting around idling. That's why I've always been a loud advocate for having ramp cards that can be cast on turns one and two. These cards allow decks to optimally use their mana on their first few turns and ramp them into the deck's engine so you can start actually progressing your game plan. There are other considerations when picking the right ramp cards as well, but converted mana cost is always a top criteria. Let's showcase this deck building philosophy with two examples, Kali of the Vast and Siona, Captain of the Pileus. Both these commanders are the key engines in their respective decks, and usually the most optimal way of brewing a deck around them is to cast them and start generating value out of them as quickly as possible. So if we want to cast these cards as quickly as possible, the best ramp cards will be the ones that let us ramp into them. For Kalia, this means ramp cards that are within the one to two converted mana cost range since they let us cast Kalia on turn three, a turn early. With mana fixing options like Talisman of Conviction and Arcane Signet being especially good here since Kalia has a three color casting cost requirement. Similarly for Siona, one converted mana cost ramp lets us cast Siona on turn two. Two amazing options for this include Utopia Sprawl and Wild Growth, which can get even even better in Siona decks since they often run Enchantress and specifically Aura payoff cards which benefit from these Aura ramp options. And it's not like non-green decks are lacking in 2 CMC ramp either, even on a budget. Any deck has access to Mindstone, Everflowing Chalice, or Wayfarer's Bobble. Any multicolor deck has access to Signets and Talismans. And even white and red has access to surprisingly good ramp cards like Curse of Opulence. The options are there if you know where to look. The biggest weakness of three CMC plus ramp spells is that in many decks, they aren't ramping into anything in particular. They're just ramping. And if you're running a bunch of three CMC plus ramp spells instead of two CMC ramp, then you're going to spend a lot of games sitting around idling while your opponents are starting their engines way ahead of you. That's not to say that any ramp spell that is above two CMC is unplayable, far from it. But unless they're in a deck that lets them ramp into a particular thing, then they need to provide something more to the deck than just tapping for half as much mana as it costs to cast it. For example, Chromatic Lantern is three CMC and only taps for one mana, but it's amazing in five color decks for the mana fixing it provides. Mirari's Wake is 5 CMC, but doubles the mana output of all your lands and pumps up your army a little, which is amazing for go wide decks that are focused primarily on land ramp. However, these cards, strong as they are, do not replace your 2 CMC ramp, but instead enhances your ramp package. Hedron Archive also provides something extra, the ability to sacrifice itself to draw two cards. And while that's a neat perk, it's just not enough for me. If you want to play some good 4 CMC ramp, then play Thran Dynamo, which taps for three mana, which is a great rate. Or Smothering Tithe, which drowns you in mana and only gets better once you toss it in a deck that cares about artifacts. Those are the type of ramp cards that justify their higher converted mana cost. 
Hedron Archive does not, at least not usually. So if at this point I've convinced you to take out Hedron Archive from your deck for a better card and want to get your hands on that sweet upgrade immediately, then head on over to our sponsor, Card Kingdom, which has all the cards that I covered in this video in stock and ready to ship out to you. You'll even get a free scoop soldier sticker if you ask for one in your order notes. So if you want to get some new cards, support our channel, or just send me piles of Hedron Archives to spite me, then go buy from Card Kingdom. Alright, I've explained why Hedron Archive is bad card draw and bad ramp. No matter what colors you're playing, you've got better options than it. It's one of the most overrated cards currently played and I'm tired of seeing it everywhere. However, I would still recommend it in very specific decks. Remember how I said that each card in your deck should serve the deck's specific game plan? Or that your ramp cards are supposed to ramp into something? Well, there are times where Hedron Archive fulfills that purpose. There are at least two different types of decks where I'm more than happy to recommend Hedron Archive as a ramp card. The first example is Dramatic Scepter combo decks. This combo involves imprinting Dramatic Reversal onto Isochron Scepter. Casting Reversal with the Scepter, untapping non-land permanents to produce two or more mana, then using that mana to activate the Scepter infinite times for an infinite loop. You can win a bunch of ways of this, such as pinging everyone to death with Ral Storm Conduit. Since Hedron Archive taps for the exact amount of mana needed to pay for this loop, it's actually a solid ramp option if your deck's game plan is to combo off with Dramatic Scepter. Example number two are Ultra Ramp decks. While most decks have their engines costing between 3 and 5 mana and therefore want to speed up to that amount, some decks have their engines costing even more mana than that. The most extreme example of this is Kozilek the Great Distortion. Kozilek decks want to quickly and consistently ramp up to a whopping 10 mana so they can cast their commander. That is a huge amount of mana, especially in a colorless deck, so it requires a huge amount of ramp. The idea here is to play a ton of ramp in your deck so you can quickly vomit out your hand full of ramp onto the battlefield, cast Kozilek, which instantly refills your depleted hand. In this case, not only is Hedron Archive good in the deck, it's one of the better ramp cards available, because both tapping for 2 mana and being able to recycle itself when you don't need the extra ramp is incredibly relevant here. Another similar example would be Perforos Bronze Blooded, which I wrote a primer about and I'm going to link in the video description below. The deck strategy is to ramp out Perforos, then use its ability to start cheating out our huge beaters. Perforos itself costs 5 mana to cast, and if our commander gets denied, then we need to start hard casting our beaters, which cost 6 or more mana, so we need more ramp than usual. I was running at least 15 ramp and ritual cards in the $50 sample list just to consistently get our game plan rolling. Between all our ramp and how quickly Perforos can deplete our hand, we need lots of card draw to refill, which is why the deck runs as many wheels as possible, and similarly, Hedron Archive's ability to recycle itself when we no longer need it is actually quite useful. So in conclusion, is Hedron Archive terrible? Well, in most of the decks that I'm seeing it played in, yes, it's terrible. It's never good card draw, it just isn't. Even mono white decks can do way better and it's a bad ramp spell in most decks. The exception are decks where the engine that you're ramping into has a much higher CMC than normal, or you're using it as part of a combo, or some other good reason that makes this usually bad ramp card into a decent or even good one. Context matters. And with that friends, we've reached the end. What started off as just a rant about a card that I don't like and I think is being played too much has devolved into me trying to teach deck building philosophy. I'm not sure if that's an improvement or not, but at least now I can finally stop talking about Hedron Archive. Hopefully I'll never have to do another rant video on a specific card that I hate ever again. So until next time friends, see ya! Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up with the latest and greatest, click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to check out similar videos, click on the links here and here.